I'm Pastor George Borkart, and this is another Higher Things Video Short. Woke Wednesday takes on hyper-partisanism. I resemble that remark. That's the subject of today's Higher Things Video Short. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, get the app, donate. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring the bell for notifications, get our app. Just search Higher Things Lutheran, and you will find our app on any platform. Donate your tax-deductible gift, link in the description, keeps the best Christian organization for youth in America, keeps us a rolling. And we need, our kids need this gospel in these dark times. Woke Wednesday means we talk to Erica Jacoby. She is the executive director of Higher Things, the face that runs the place of the little Lutheran youth organization that could. Uh, Erica, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. I picked a special one just for you today, buddy. Oh, yeah, I read this. I was like, she's coming after me. Uh, what is hyper par hyper partisan partisanism, and how is it different <laughs> from regular partisanism partisanship? Partisanship. I'm going to pronounce the word right. Hyper partisanship. Repeat Whatever. after me. Hyper partisanship. I, that's me. This is the picture of. Go back to Greek, my friend. Go back yeah, to Greek. You I'm going to keep Greek. right. Continue. <laughs> you may go. So what is hyperpartisanship? Um, let's start with partisanship. Let's define that first. And uh, dictionary.com um, defines it as prejudice in favor of a particular cause or political party or bias, very simply. So partisan partisanship is the fundamental behavior that allows the two-party system in our country to remain in place. Um, and it's also that existence is pretty critical to our democracy. It's just sort of how it's set up. But hyperpartisanship is... Um, a sharply polarized situation or sharply contrasting situation in which uh, political parties are in fierce um, disagreement with each other that could, you know, to the point where it could lead to to violence and just the, in a, the sort of gridlock, the inability to sort of move forward. Um, and it seems that we are now living in an age where the media and political institutions are now sort of set up to amplify the difference. Um, sort of more about debating the truth and facts with uh, with um, with the objective of, at arriving at sort of a common grounds and principles. So, hyper partisanship. Yeah. Where are we seeing this, and what is the effect of it? So, super proud of you for getting the pronunciation right. Good job. Um, so I don't think I have to work too hard to prove the existence right now of hyperpartisanship. Um, it might be the only thing the two political parties would agree on at the moment, um, both the red and the blue team. Um, but, it, you know, political leaders on both sides are saying really nasty, sort of unhelpful things. Um, it's arguable that the current political strategy of both parties is whatever they're for, we're against. It's, I mean, it, it feels that way. New news networks make it worse. Um, it's in the news networks. You really can't find, it's hard to find unbiased, truthful reporting. Um, the term fake news is real, um, happens. So you also see evidence of this on social media all the time, this sort of hyper-polarizing or hyper-partisanship. Uh, people say things that I don't think they would be willing necessarily to say to someone's face. Um, and disagreeing with someone's sort of political affiliation is equal to attacking them personally. Gone is kind of the common ground um, of even just listening, maybe simple ma debate manners and best construction. And, and sort of worse, worse than that even, are the, the companies who run social media um, and the search engines that we use on the Internet uh, to, to – to navigate things on the internet and look things up are tracking everything you do online. And they use that information um, to sort of feed you information and to sort of influence you for their own, for their own purposes. Um, so the effect of our country's state of hyperpolarization sort of prevents any kind of um, helpful dialogue and consensus that would lead to compromise um, from being reached at all. 
Um, so that's kind of the effect of what's going on right now. It's just people aren't finding common ground. It feels like we're getting farther and farther apart. Um, you're nodding your head, so good. That, 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 he's, he wants to talk. He's ready for his question. You ready for my question? Not really. <laughs> Are you having a fun day today with our Woke Wednesday chat? This one's um, not so fun. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. My question to you, Pastor Borghart, though, is, I mean, I, you agree with me, yes, that it, it's become very acrimonious. It's yes. Been, it's yes. become very ugly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what should Christians do in this climate? Should we should we should we do like in the in, in medieval times and take monastic orders and withdraw from society? Should should Christians delete all our social media accounts right now and throw away anything that connects us to the interweb and just like totally go off the grid? What what? What what should we do? What should Christians do? How do we kind of survive? And how do we how do we um, how do we love and serve our neighbor again in this climate? What I think you do? I think you we have to have discussion, and it has to be civil. And I think we need to um, understand our own biases, and try to work to sort of um, win our neighbor over, uh, rather than sort of beat our neighbor into submission. I think that we that we we have to stand up for the things that we need to stand up for, the truth, the gospel, um, life issues, um, the, the the things we the things that we hold dear, but we can do that in a loving and charitable way, and we need to sort of not repay evil for evil. So often we do this, so we are canceled, so we cancel others. We yeah. are we, we 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 feel like we've been beaten, so we beat others. We had this. A week ago with, with you know, whatever sin is going on that we've suffered, we we deal out to others with retribution. Yeah, so I think, eye for an eye, Hammurabi's code there, yeah. Also in Leviticus. Uh, but, uh, that too. Yeah, that too. Uh, Sorry. But, but I, think, I think that the way to go out of this is to sort of understand that we're all in this together and we're all trying to move forward for the common good. And we have we, the only way to have this is to have a discourse, an open discourse, and, and not have it be um, full of threats and the like. That's 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 the way I see. I mean, I'm I'm a I'm I, I bleed red. Uh, who doesn't? But I mean, what, well, but, but what there are Christians who are. I understand. Are, so I have uh, to tell my I have to tell my parishioners that God died for Democrats too. Um, he died he died for independents. He died for libertarians. He died for blue states. And and so I, I tell Thor that because you know his collar. But so like, um, what what I would tend to say is like, we we don't need to have it be anything other than we're all for good. We're trying to do the best we can. Let's sit down and sort of hash it out. I think social media is not helpful for this. I think that that, that, that discussions like this degenerate um, into into personal attacks. Um, there's a self-righteousness on both sides that is unhelpful. Um, there's an injustifies the means. I think we need to sort of self-examine ourselves, find out where we've done wrong, repent of those things, and try to lift our neighbor up uh, while holding fast to what we believe. So in other words, we're, we, we don't have to sort of withdraw from... I don't think you can. We don't uh, have to, yeah, I, we I don't know how you do that. We don't have to turn off the internet. We don't have to. Um, do we have to? We don't have to shut everything down. In um, the in the end, that sort of action is simply uh, virtue signaling. Mm. Um, which we which we've talked no, about before. Another term. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and so like a link in the description, and so um, I think that um, I think that you can. I think you can have this discussion. You can be involved in these discussions without it getting to be like, this is what I believe. And if you don't like it, you can yeah. stick it where the sun don't shine. That's not the way to, that's as you want to deal with others, be dealt with yourself as you want to, you know, so love builds up, hate tears down and we can have a discussion without villainizing vi vil vil villain, villain, making a villain out of our neighbor. All right. All right. 30 seconds. You're the last word. Oh, I get the last word today. Oh gosh. Well, um, I think that, um, I think that you're right. I think you're absolutely right. We don't have to shut everything down. We don't have to turn everything off. I do think it's our duty to sort of be informed. Um, I think it's our duty to pray, uh, through this process. I think it's their duty to pray for, um, 
whoever is not our guy. Um, I think it's our duty to pray for, uh, you know, we, we pray in the church for um, all leadership because we know in the fourth commandment that, you know, God works through those means. Um, so I think we need to continue to pray. I think we need to continue to be informed. And I think what you said is one way to love our neighbor is to truly listen to them and listen to what they have to say. Um, and, and I think if we don't do that, we really have no hope of sort of, um, coming to common ground, um, cause everybody wants to be heard and understood. Um, and there's no changing minds or changing of hearts when we sort of shut people down, call them names. Um, right. you know, they're supposed to know we are so Christians I, by our love. So I, I, my, my congregation is a small, it's not, it's not our country, but it's okay to disagree with the, the direction I, I want to go. It's not okay to disagree with Christ died for you, but it's okay to, but like there are things that we can, we can still move forward and disagree on. And if you win, you win. If I win, when I win, you know what I mean? It's like, there's, there's no need to, to sort of villain. Yeah. Just because you disagree with me doesn't mean you're a villain. Um, you just, wrong. or I'm the victim or I'm the victim on right. the other hand. Right. You even missed the joke. You're just wrong. Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> Erica Jacoby is the executive director of Higher Things. Uh, she is a former uh, high school teacher and our woke Wednesday buddy. Thank you, Erica. Thanks for having me today. It's about Jesus loving your neighbor. If that discussion and that argument gets out of control and we end up in a place where we can't love our neighbor, we need to step back and sort of think about it and think of a way that love builds up. Um, hate and uh, unlove. Um, we can have all the, the the right feelings in our heart um, and a right love for our um, for God and those around us. When we when we end up not loving our neighbor while we're communicating that, it's not helpful. Think about it. I'm Pastor George Barkart, and this has been another Higher Things video short. <laughs>